here I have two acids, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and acetic acid, or vinegar, HC2H3O2. They're both acids because, as we've already discussed in the definitions in our last video, both of these substances will donate hydrogen ions, or protons, in solution. So what makes them different? Are all acids created equal? Well, if we look at the label here on the hydrochloric acid, you'll notice that it has a pretty serious warning on it. It says that it can only be used in ventilated areas. It specifically says to avoid contact with eyes, mouth, or clothing. And it has a pretty serious hazard identification for the health hazard. If you turn around a bottle of vinegar in your pantry, you're not going to see the same warning label. So no, not all acids are created equal. So what's the difference? Why is it that hydrochloric acid has such scary sounding warnings when vinegar is something that we eat all the time? It's in ketchup, it's in vinaigrette salad dressings, it's in a lot of different cooking and it's not something that you're going to find these uh, hazards labeled on because it's not hazardous to us. So the difference, it turns out, comes from differences in the pH, first of all. So we look here at a pH test with some pH paper. And if we look at the pHs of these two substances, hydrochloric acid you'll know is on the lower end of the scale with a pH of about 1, um, whereas our acetic acid is somewhere between 2 and 3, so maybe 2 and a half. Um, so I've labeled the pHs of these two substances, which by the way, these are just approximations. Depending on the concentration of the solution that you have, your pH for your hydrochloric acid or your acetic acid could vary slightly from these numbers that I have here. pH, by the way, stands for power of hydrogen. And we're going to figure out in this video what in the world that means. Okay, but we know that right now that these acids are definitely not the same. And part of that reason is because they have different powers of hydrogen. They have different amounts of hydrogen ions in solution. So in this video, we're going to look at calculations of hydrogen ions in solution and calculations of pH. To recap what we've talked about in the last video, acids in water will increase hydrogen ion concentration because acids are defined as substances that produce hydrogen ions in solution or defined as substances that are hydrogen ion donors. Bases, on the other hand, increase hydroxide ion concentration according to the Arrhenius definition. Um, if you're looking at the Bronsted-Lowry definition, and they're defined as hydrogen ion acceptors, but it will also have a result of increasing hydroxide ions in solution because they will also be accepting some hydrogen ions from water, stripping that water of a hydrogen and leaving behind the hydroxide ion. In order for us to use this definition of an acid or a base, it would be helpful to understand just how much hydrogen ions or just how many of them are found in water before we add any compounds, before we have an acid or a base added in, so we can understand what an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration even looks like. So let's spend a little bit of time looking at water. Even in pure samples of water, we have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions present in the solution. We talked about this in a pre previous video as well the water molecules will actually break apart to some degree, not very many of them, but you'll have small amounts of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions floating around in the solution. The amount, it turns out, uh, of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions um, is 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh moles per liter. 
Um, and if we look at the bottom of the screen here, we can see that we have this expressed as an equilibrium expression. Kw is equal to the product of the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. In case you're not familiar with this notation, the brackets that are around the H plus and around the OH minus are read as concentration of. So it's the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions. It turns out that this is a set number. It does not change. And for water, the product of these two concentrations is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Uh, molarity squared or moles squared per liters squared, which is how we know the number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in solution. Because every single time you have a hydrogen ion, you also have a hydroxide ion. It is, after all, water. You can't get the H plus without also having an OH minus being produced, because if you split the water in half, you're going to make both halves of that. You're not going to create or destroy any of the material. So we have this um, equilibrium expression, which turns out it comes in really handy for us because we can also calculate amounts of hydroxide ions or hydrogen ions in other solutions using this equilibrium expression. Um, so let's try one of these calculations. It says the hydroxide ion concentration in a particular solution is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar calculate the hydrogen ion concentration for this solution. We get to use the equation that we just looked at, the equilibrium expression for water, K sub W, which is equal to, again, the product of the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. Remember, KW is a constant, and it has a value of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th molar squared. So we can substitute into our equation with the value for Kw and with the value given to us in the question, which was the hydroxide ion concentration. This leaves us with only one variable, and that variable being the one we're asked to find, the uh, hydrogen ion concentration. We can solve for one variable. Yes, the math looks compl complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward. If I want to solve for H plus concentration, I just need to isolate that variable. And if I use my calculator, plug this in, I'm going to get a value of 1.0 times 10 to the negative ninth molar for my concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. Let's look at another one. The hydrogen ion concentration in a particular solution is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molar calculate the hydroxide ion concentration for this solution. Once again, we can use the same equation for Kw, keeping in mind that Kw is a constant and has a set value. If we substitute in our value for our constant and the value for the hydrogen ion concentration provided in the question, we can solve for the hydroxide ion concentration, which is our missing variable. In this problem, we get a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 10th molar. Let's talk a little bit about the pH scale. I mentioned at the very beginning of the video that the pH scale stands for power of hydrogen. And I told you that we'd get to that later. So why do we call it power of hydrogen? And what is the pH scale? Well, first of all, it is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity, basicity, whatever, um, of a solution. It tells us just how much of an acid it is, how uh, acid behavior, how much it exhibits, um, or how much it acts like a base. Um, the pH scale ranges in value from 1 to 14, although there are acids and bases that measure outside of this range also. It is possible to have an acid with a pH of less than 1. In fact, you can even have an acid with a negative pH. For bases, you can have um, values that are greater than 14. But for the most part, most of the things that we deal with do fall between this range. 
and this is the range that we're able to measure accurately with um, indicators that we would use in a chemistry classroom. Some equations that you'll need to know for the pH scale. First of all, pH is equal to the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. You should be familiar with logarithms from your Algebra 2 class. A logarithm is a scale where each step on the scale represents a change that is a power of 10. That's actually where we get the name pH from. Power of hydrogen has to do with the fact that steps on the pH scale represent changes of powers of 10. In fact, each step on the pH scale corresponds to a tenfold change of acidity or basicity. pOH um, is actually um, the kind of opposite of the pH. It's the um, power of hydroxide, if you will. And so its formula is negative logarithm of the hydroxide ion concentration. It so happens that these two values, pH and pOH, will always add together to equal 14. Um, that is where the beauty of the pH skill comes into play, ranging from 1 to 14. This equation will always work. If you know one of them, you can find the other. Um, you will probably never be asked to find pOH, um, but it is something that will make your math shorter in some instances where you can um, take a shorter route to solving a multi-step problem. So that is why I've included it here um, in, in the pH plus pOH part and the pOH equals the negative logarithm that part as well. Um, you can use these equations um, to get to an answer a little bit quicker sometimes than going the long way around. Um, so on the pH scale, acids have a pH of less than 7. Bases have a pH of greater than 7. Neutral substances like water have a pH of exactly 7. And it is exact because remember each step on the scale is a tenfold change. So 7 versus 7.5 isn't actually a difference of 0.5. Okay, you're looking at a much bigger difference because it's a logarithmic scale. In fact, if you look at a substance that has a pH of 2 versus a substance with a pH of 4, first of all, the stronger acid is the one with the lower pH. Again, if you look at the pH equation, you'll notice it is the negative logarithm, which means that the lower you are on the scale, the more acidic character it has, the, the greater um, acidity. Um, so a pH of 2 is stronger than a pH of 4, but it's not two times stronger. Okay, the factor of 10 comes into play here. On the pH scale, 2 is two steps away from 4. Each step represents a change of 10 times. So an acid with a pH of 2, rather than being two times stronger than a pH of 4, is actually 100 times stronger than a pH of 4. Two steps is 10 to the power of 2, which is 100. Um, that is how a logarithmic scale works. So let's look at some calculations of pH. The first problem says, in one solution, there is a 0 0.002 molar solution of HCl. Find the pH. Well, I know my hydrogen ion concentration because it tells me that I have HCl, that is an acid, that is a substance that produces hydrogen ions. I know that the concentration that I've been given is not my hydroxide ion concentration. That wouldn't make any sense. It is my hydrogen ion concentration. And if I know my hydrogen ion concentration, I can find my pH because I know the equation is pH equals negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. So if I plug that into my calculator, I will get a pH of 2.70. For this solution. The second problem says if there is a solution of 0 0.00005 molar NaOH, find its pH. Well, in this problem, I have a hydroxide ion concentration that's given to me. I'm going to, instead of listing all those zeros out, I have it here in scientific notation 5.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. 
that is your hydroxide ion concentration because NaOH is not going to be making hydrogen ions in solution, but rather will be producing hydroxide ions. So my hydroxide ion concentration is what I have been given, and I'll use the value from the question, the 0.00005 or 5 times 10 to the negative fifth, um, to solve my pH. However, because I have hydroxide ion concentration, this is not a one-step problem. I can first find my pOH by using the negative logarithm of hydroxide ion concentration. That, if I plug into that, I will get a pOH of 4.30. But notice that the question does not ask for this, but rather for pH. So now I get to use my second equation, which is pH plus pOH equals 14. And I find that my pH is 9.70 which makes sense because I have NaOH. It should have a pH that corresponds to that of a base, and it does.